Today, it's classic British scenery that's drawing a dynamic couple to make the leap from a seaside town to the countryside. And their house hunt is a journey full of surprises. Oh, that's, that's interesting. I wasn't expecting no. that. I'm seeing big smiles. <laughs> it's ticking quite a few boxes. One property casts its spell before we even cross the threshold. Loving the ambiance of this place. This is the sort of thing that we were looking for. Today I'm in the Cotswolds in the National Arboretum in Western Burt. A large number of the trees here are UK champions, either for being the tallest or for having the widest trunk girth or for being particularly rare. Since planting first started here over 160 years ago, things have really grown. There are now over 2,500 different types of trees. And it makes the perfect showground for the National Arboriculture Show. Everyone from tree surgeons to wood carvers are here, and I'm going to be exploring the show a little bit later. First, though, let's take a look at some of the wonderful sights that the Cotswolds have to offer. The Cotswolds is an area covering 800 square miles, running through five counties, including Gloucestershire, Warwickshire and Oxfordshire. The county's largest designated area of outstanding natural beauty is characterised by undulating hills, crisscrossed by an extensive network of dry stone walls. Cotswold stone is a defining feature of preserved villages such as Stanton, where impressive houses are fronted with smart mullioned windows, and Broad Camden, where charming cottages bordered by country gardens line the narrow winding lanes. Much of the Cotswolds' architecture harks back to the medieval wool trade, not only the rows of workers' cottages, but also the grander buildings and large ornate churches. In the Middle Ages, the Cotswolds produced the best wool in Europe, and as the industry flourished, wealthy merchants hoping for a smooth journey to the afterlife lavished money on what became known as wool churches. The magnificent church of St. Peter and St. Paul in North Leach is a prime example and dubbed the Cathedral of the Cotswolds. Attracting over 20 million visitors a year and countless escapees from city life, the Cotswolds offer a perfect slice of English country living. The headline for the Cotswolds property market is that it's expensive, especially when compared to the UK average of £327,000 for a detached home. The Wiltshire and Oxfordshire areas are on that more expensive side, but head west into Gloucestershire and you'll get more for your property pound. Luckily, today's house buyers are pretty flexible when it comes to which part of this beautiful area they'd love to call home. Banking Administrator Maria and her operations analyst husband Tony have been an item for 16 years. We met each other at a black tie event. We were introduced to each other and things just really rolled from that point onwards. We just so, hit it off, didn't yeah, we? We clicked. Yeah. It was supposed to be um, one of these dinner and dances where you actually had dance cards and you were supposed to have a dance with any of the guys or girls on the table. We ended up dancing every dance together. We, the others didn't get a look in. And he did ask for my number when we left, so I was very happy. A Good big, big attraction. attraction <laughs> yeah, that was a big attraction for sure. That attraction grew, and the couple tied the knot almost 14 years ago. For the last 11 of those, Maria and Tony have lived in their three-bedroom, chalet-style house in South End on sea in Essex. After recent holidays in the English countryside, they've decided they would like to swap the seaside for rolling hills. We'd like to move away from the area simply because there's not as much activity as we would like to do. If we've got to do any activity or if we want to go walking, then we have to travel quite a way for it. Same with cycling, it's very flat around here. When we go for walks, we don't actually want to walk around houses and on pavements. We want to actually go to places where we can walk in the trails. We think that we're going to find what we want somewhere like the Cotswolds because that's going to offer like more hills, rolling countryside, just more what we want than the flat that we have over here. When they make their move, they're both keen to improve their work-life balance. I've actually been commuting now for 33 years and I think it's time to slow down and actually start enjoying life a bit more. I'm looking forward to a quieter pace and getting off the merry-go-round. 
having time to do things like I enjoy. I love my cooking, I like making greeting cards, maybe we'll join a ramblers club or something, you know, we might take up fishing. Um, there's, there's so many things that we could get out, you know, get into and that's why it appeals to us so much. I'd still like to do maybe a local role but, you know, maybe I'll just work in a local company or a local shop or something. Tony's hoping to reduce his working days in London so he can enjoy country life and dedicate his time to his favourite passions. Gardening is something I enjoy doing. It's always therapeutic to actually get away from the daily sort of things going on in your, in your mind, get away from work, and it just takes your mind off things. And that's not all. One of my main hobbies is to do DIY. If a place needs doing up or it needs any work on it, then I'm looking forward to getting my hands dirty and general DIY and handyman stuff. With their house sold, all they need now is a new country pad that Tony can put his stamp on so the couple can begin their new life. We're looking for the outdoor life. We're looking for taking up activities, getting outside and generally having a healthier lifestyle than the one we've currently got. I can liken myself to a bit of a hamster on a, on a wheel and I just feel like it's time to get out of the cage and, you know, just start doing things. And that's what we want to do. Maria and Tony are happy to consider settling anywhere within the Cotswolds, so we have free reign of the region for our house hunt. Before we set off, though, I'm meeting up with them so we can go through the finer details of what it is they're hoping for in their new home. Hi. Hi. Maria, Tony, it's great to see you. How much looking have you done in the Cotswolds so far? Unfortunately, we haven't done any. We've only come down a couple of days and we've toured the area. We like what we see and we think this could be the next place for us. So what are we looking for? What we really need is a nice garden, a bit of land if possible. I only really need two or three bedrooms. We don't need a massive place. We'd rather have it open, so it's a more open plan. Not really keen on cottages because there's low ceilings. Uh, don't want to be next to a main road or a very busy road anyway. But we also want the views. I mean, this would be perfect. So the style of property, not a, a, not a, a country cottage, unless yeah, it's open well. plan. And not really yeah. a new build. So I guess we're looking for character. So maybe something that's had some sort of conversion or something that we can convert. So we are literally open to what may come our way. Yeah. So in terms of proximity to a village? Yeah. Edge of a village, I uh, think edge is of what we're Edge at. of village, um, even push it out and make it rural. So what's in the budget? Well, what's in our kitty, babe? Well, uh, we've got £550,000. Obviously, if it needs work and the rest of it, I mean, that is our max. If we can get anything for around four hundred and fifty, we we'd be very happy. Well, it's a great place to be. It's and we have brilliant. gorgeous properties for you to see in this beautiful part of the world that you could soon be calling home. That'd be good. Be great. For their top budget of £550,000, Maria and Tony are hoping for a bright, spacious character property with high ceilings, an open-plan kitchen diner and two to three bedrooms. They'd like a feature garden, ideally with views, and are hoping to be in a quiet location on the outskirts of a village. We've handpicked a diverse assortment of properties to show Maria and Tony, and after they've viewed each one, they'll discover the asking price. Our final visit to the Mystery House will offer slightly more in the way of community, but also goes all out on space and character. We're travelling to Chipping Camden in Gloucestershire in the north of the Cotswolds. The beautiful small market town has a history as a rich wool trading centre in the Middle Ages and its high street is a vision of honey-coloured Cotswold stone. In the centre is the old market hall, built in 1627. It was designed to provide shelter for the town's food market. The classic Cotswold setting attracts tourists in their droves and the independent shops and cafes also provide for locals. Standing 120 feet tall, the striking tower of St. James's Church, built back in 1500, can be seen for miles around. The neighbouring lodges and gateway are all that remain of the old Camden House, which burnt down in the Civil War. On the edge of the town, we've arrived at this detached property. It's nice looking. It's got a bit of character, hasn't it? It's certainly got some character. Yeah. It's interesting. 
the original part of this property, 1920s, it was a bungalow to start with. So not so much a barn conversion, but a bungalow conversion. And then you can see the new brick came in in 2010-2012, uh, the project was finished, where the current owner has extended, so you've got two-storey accommodation. It actually blends quite well, doesn't it, in character with the whole house? It is a little mismatched, I think, for me. Well, should we see if the inside's a bit more of a winner for you? Yeah, absolutely. Let's yeah, have yeah. what it's okay. got to offer. Let's, let's go. Come on. This unusual red brick property has more than doubled in size since it was first built. It's topped with slate roof tiles and is finished to a very high standard inside. A large entrance hallway decked with flagstones leads us to our first stop. Come straight in to what would be yeah. your kitchen diner. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's interesting. I wasn't expecting that. No. Especially not with the uh, windows no, on top. I wasn't expecting that. It's, that's good. I'm seeing big smiles. <laughs> it's ticking quite a few boxes because you've got the lights, you've got the space, and I'm loving the floor. And look at the views. You can already see the views, which is what we want, yeah. isn't it? Definitely. Yeah. You wanted to enjoy that Cotswold countryside, and it is literally on your doorstep. This room is really nicely done. Great. Let's see more. We're heading across the hallway to the rear of the house. And then you come to one of your two living spaces downstairs. One's used as a guest bedroom at the moment, okay. but it could be a dining room. And this, I'm thinking, you know, after all that entertaining, just somewhere to put your feet up at the end of the day. My immediate reaction is it feels a little small. I'm with Maria on this. It's probably too small for me. Well, I imagine you'd be living in that kitchen space. You, you wouldn't <laughs> want to leave it, would you? No, for sure. But at the end of a busy day, nice cosy winter yeah. evening. Yeah. And still somewhere to put your feet up. Well, there's lots more house to see. OK. So let's keep exploring and then you can let me know what you think. Yeah, OK. Also on the ground floor, there's a cloakroom a handy utility and a space currently set up as a playroom. We're moving upstairs where there are three potential bedrooms located in the eaves, which have use of a stylish family bathroom. One with skylights is currently used as a study, along with two existing doubles. There's one at the front of the house, but we're heading to the back where there's a very spacious master with its own ensuite. Well, this is a good size. Wow. That's, that's plenty of room, isn't that's it? That's <laughs> enough room for us, I think. Yeah. And an ensuite as well. No, liking yeah. it. Yeah. And you've got the views as well. You can see that straight away. It's really good. Like it. Well, there is so much house to explore still. There and is. of course, we've got to guess the price. So oh, I hadn't even thought about that. Bit... <laughs> so into looking at the house. Start having a thing. Let's head out into the garden. And uh, yes, then we will talk money. OK. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you. The property has a single garage and a good-sized enclosed garden with far-reaching views across the surrounding countryside. What do you think of the outside space of this property? It's smaller than I thought it would be. Yeah, I agree. Obviously, you've got all the outside space, which is absolutely beautiful, really lovely. And I know you enjoy gardening, and this is pretty much a blank canvas. It is. Lawned at the moment, but really, you can make this whatever you want. You could make you it want. your own, couldn't you? And you said you're quite up for doing work, oh, yeah, getting yeah. involved in a bit of a project. Yeah, um, we just have to think about um, how we want to design it. So having had a look at the property and taken in these beautiful views, what do you think this property is currently on the market for? I think this property is on the market for £465,000. I think it's on the market for £475,000. This property is currently on the market for £550,000. Wow, really... that's a lot more, more than, than we, thought. we thought. Yeah. That's a surprise. I wonder if that's because of the area. Well, we're in an area of outstanding natural beauty okay. in the Cotswolds. Yeah. Not too far to commute to some beautiful towns. Yeah. It's a hot spot. That's, yeah. in, that's <laughs> interesting. Yeah. Now you know what this is on the market for. Why don't you take another look around at the space and uh, I'll meet you out the front in a, a few moments. Yeah. Okay, good. good day. Bang on the top budget, the price tag of this property has clearly shocked them. That said, it's beautifully finished with a fabulous open plan kitchen diner and three bedrooms. The garden is a fair size, providing magnificent views and all set in a desirable location. Primarily what has caught my eye about this house is the kitchen. It has a lot of light, it has a lot of space, 
and some of the other areas that have um, openness and quite, feel quite spacious. I really like this house. I think it's got a lot of character. I especially like the kitchen with all the light coming through and I quite like the outlook of the property towards the back of the property. Hi. Hi. <laughs> so you've had a good explore round? Yes. We have. The first ever house you've stepped inside in the Cotswolds? Yep. It is, yeah. Are you ready to see more? Yes. We Come are. on, Definitely. let's do it. Spanning Wiltshire, Gloucestershire and Oxfordshire is the beautiful Cotswold Water Park. Covering 40 square miles, it encompasses more than 150 lakes and is a wildlife haven. Within the park is the Lechlade and Bushy Lees Trout Fisheries, where amateur anglers can come to learn fly fishing and pros can come for their catch of the day. Maria and Tony can't wait to get stuck into countryside pursuits when they make their move, so we've sent them along to try their hand at fly fishing. Tim Small set up the farm in the 1970s when he was one of only eight trout farmers in the UK. Now he's one of around 450. So how long have you been in business, Tim? I've been up here since fish farming, since 1974. I started when I was very young, started off small doing restaurants and local fishmongers and stuff and grew up to doing wholesalers supermarkets and actually i became the first fish farm in europe to get organic certification and as a result of that i saw that i could actually produce fish on the farm which are of such a good quality that they were perfect for fishing have you ever done fly fishing before no I've never been fly fishing so what's the difference between fly fishing and um, the other sort trout mainly feed on insects we're going to get you to cast an imitation fly that imitates what they are feeding on at the moment there are around 70,000 fish growing here at any one time across the 10 ponds and raceways and around 4,000 swimming in two fishing lakes these are restocked at least twice a week now it's time for an introduction to the different types of flies Tony has a little experience in coarse fishing, but Maria is a relative novice. So this is a mayfly. This one here is a damselfly, but the one they really love are these, which are called a buzzer, and that is like a mosquito larva, and they adore those, they prefer them to these. So I'll hand you over to Nick, have a great time, and I shall see you later. Thank you, right, Thank brilliant. You. Thanks a lot. It's fishery manager Nick Mackey who's going to teach the pair how to hopefully catch a fish in Bushy Lee's Lake behind them. Generally with fishing and fly fishing, you use all hands, so you're pulling the line off and keeping it in your hand. And on the end here, we've got a fly that I put on already earlier, which is a little damsel. If you want to have a hold of that... And That's just quite have a light, look. actually. Yeah, it's lighter are. than I thought. Can't wait to get, give this a go. Excellent. But before they hit the water, for real, they need to know how to cast correctly. So all we're doing is plying off a bit of line, going back and forth. We call it a 10 to 2. So if you imagine a clock face, you're just going 10 to 2. And then right at the very end when you cast, you just drop your rod down and let that line come out like that. And if you just want to have a go, Maria? Sure. And then you want to just lift up and go 10 to 2, 10 to 2, 10 to two. So same thing, Tony, if you just take the, pick the rod up for us. And you've done a bit of fishing before, so you've got to remember <laughs> that you're not casting one single one out, you're going back and forth. So it's the same action, ten to two, that's it. Perfect. That's it, if we just go back over to here. Protective glasses and headwear on, they're ready to fish. And we'll hopefully catch some fish. The sunglasses not only help with the glare from the sunlight on the water, but protect against any stray fishing hooks. So if you just hold that in your hand there, but be careful because okay. obviously it's a hook. And you just want to drop that into the water now. Okay. And just let that go down into water and then peel off a little bit of line, okay. as we were before. Is that enough? Yeah, that should be fine. And then you want to come back out and then cast out, it's again with a 10 to 2. That's it. Let that go. That's it, straight on top of him. Look at that, perfect cast. Now, we go. If you come round to my right, Tony, because you're right-handed, aren't you? Yep, yeah, I am. And you're just doing that 10 to 2 action again. Just let a little bit of line out with your hand as it goes forward. That's it. And then last one, and let that go. That's it. I've taken wow. the bait. <laughs> yeah, we've got <laughs> so your hooked, have we? <laughs> you definitely. Excellent. Yeah. 
practice makes for it does it does the more you do something the better you'll get at it and if you're going to come back and do it again and keep doing it and keep doing it you'll find that over time you just it becomes sort of a natural almost as much as walking and riding a bike once you know how to do it you never forget it no, it's certainly been a lot of fun good well nick thanks for the lesson that's all right we'll see you again no yeah. brilliant thanks best of luck guys thanks very much Although there's no bite today, let's hope our house hunt results in us reeling in a great property catch here in the Cotswolds. It's day two of our Cotswold property adventure, seeking out a country escape for Maria and Tony from Southend-on-Sea in Essex to call home. They've got a budget of £550,000 to spend on a spacious character property with an attractive garden. Still to come, church bells may chime when our mystery house is revealed. So every Sunday morning, as you lie in bed, you may hear a little singing <laughs> waking you with, your, with your morning cuppa in the papers. <laughs> oh, okay. what time they start. <laughs> and top tree experts show off the impressive art of knot tying. Stop the clock! Wow, 26 seconds! You smashed the record! <laughs> it's a new day and there are still two more houses to see. Later, of course, there's the mystery house, which might not be quite the rural escape our couple had in mind. But first, I'm going to show them a house on a hill. Our next property stop is in the village of Eastcombe in Gloucestershire, towards the west of the Cotswolds. Sitting on a hilltop, the village has spectacular views across the Toadsmoor Valley, including from the local pub, where visitors can enjoy the outlook while stopping for refreshment after a beautiful country walk. On the edge of Eastcombe, we've arrived at this detached Cotswold stone property, which benefits from its elevated position. So here we are, Maria, Tony, in the Cotswolds, your Cotswolds cottage. That's lovely. That is nice. That is yeah. really, really nice. Loving the ambiance of this place. We're getting the height and mm. you know the views are going to come and suddenly they just open up. And this is the sort of thing that we were looking for. And the house uh, has got heaps of character. Yeah. It was an old workers' cottage. Was it? Well, originally two okay. that they converted years ago. It Shall is. we get inside and see more? Can't wait. Yeah, come absolutely. on. This cottage is thought to date back to the early 1800s, and with that history comes character charm. It's been extended twice in its lifetime. We're entering into a galley kitchen, which forms part of the extension and accommodates a dining area. The views. Views are great. Straight over Straight the Valley, the gorgeous. Shame about the kitchen size, but the view is <laughs> there. Do you like what's here already? It's lovely. You know, it's woodwork surfaces, they look great. What's here is nice. <laughs> well, this is the newer part of the property. Let's go into the, the older part of the house, your living area. Okay. At the front of the cottage is the open plan sitting room. So this was the original workers' cottage, or the, the two of them separated, joined together. Yeah. I'm loving looking at the stonework in the lounge, just brings the cottage alive. There's a lot of light coming through it in various up, windows. It? Yeah. To this area. This one isn't listed. Okay. So in terms of adding okay. different doors in uh -huh. or even extending out into that, that patio space at the yeah. back and maybe up as well to give you even more space in the property mm -hmm. or here extending out onto the patio with your kitchen. I'm liking okay. the sound of that. Yeah. You've got options here. So, That's what we like. Should we take a look upstairs? Yeah. Okay. Let's come this way. An open wooden stairway leads to the first floor, where there's a tiled family bathroom and three bedrooms. There's one with a contemporary cottage feel in the extension, a smaller one in the main part of the house, and next door is the master. Quite high ceilings for a cottage, and waking up with those lovely views exactly. of the valley. Yeah. I mean, as a bedroom size for a cottage, it's a good size. Yeah, I mean, the, you've got that, a double bed, a king size the bed. It's a cottage. So rooms traditionally yeah. are smaller. It's now trying to figure out how you'd configure them. It's yeah, lovely as it is, but I think we would need to make a few changes. Quite a few <laughs> changes. I want you to see the garden, so let's head out and have another look. OK. And let's guess the price. Yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> We're, with all the work involved. <laughs> with the work involved. <laughs> 
At the rear of the property is an enclosed courtyard and shed. And at the front, as we've already seen, there's a tiered landscape garden surrounded by trees and borders with a large raised patio from which to take in the stunning outlook and beautiful sunsets. Lovely views, the peace and quiet. <laughs> It's almost like you've got different rooms out here. Yeah, obviously it's not your traditional garden, but then we weren't looking for traditional. I quite like the idea of having different sections in the garden as a whole. Bearing that in mind, what do you think this property with these amazing views is currently on the market for? I think this property is on the market for £420,000. Tony, what do you think? I would have to go low as well. Uh, my, my initial thought was around £425,000. This property is currently on the market for £410,000. Okay. I'm glad that it's <laughs> yeah. that much so under budget yeah. and we're on the right on wavelength the right for yeah. what we can get for our money, including those wonderful views but allowing us to add our stamp to the property. Well, knowing that now, do you want to take another look around and we'll, we'll catch up once those, those cogs of word a bit more? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we can start moving walls now. <laughs> I'll, I'll come and see the plans once, once you've had a, had a little look around. Yeah. All right, see you in this gorgeous Cotswold Stone period cottage is priced £140,000 below the top budget, which would allow Maria and Tony the freedom to really put their stamp on it. It's full of character both inside and out. It gives them three bedrooms and a delightful garden with spectacular views. The village location means amenities are close to hand. I think this house is in a great location. It's got all the countryside that we're looking for. It is a little small as it stands, um, but we can see that there's potential to knock a few walls here and there to make it our own. I think this place is lovely. I think that this place has got a lot of character. It's in a wonderful position, uh, some great views. Uh, however, I think it's uh, probably a little small in places and we would need to do some work to it to give us the space that we're looking for. When I walk around this property, I get a good feel for the actual ambience of the house. It's feeling nice and quiet and peaceful, and the general layout of the property is really good. Great, lots of smiles still, I'm liking this. Had a good look round? Yes, we have. Yeah, we've had a good look round, and I think the both of us have knocked a few walls out, and we're happy, within the budget, we're gonna be able to um, make it our own if we wish to. All right, sounds good, lots to talk about. Yeah. Yep. Come on. Our final journey to the mystery property takes us to the village of Titherington in the south of Gloucestershire and to the west of the Cotswolds. There's a real sense of community here, with a village shop run by residents, a post office and a village hall. There's also a 16th century dining pub and two churches, one neighbouring our last offering, which is approached down a gravel driveway. As Maria and Tony will see, our mystery house may be in an unexpected setting, which will mean compromising on those far-reaching views, but if they can do that, they'll be suitably rewarded. So here we are, the that's, mystery house. Well, that's that's different. interesting. <laughs> <laughs> that's different and interesting. That's quite big. I take it it's the whole thing. <laughs> it's the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, that's impressive. That looks good from the outside. It's a lot of character and plenty of space. It was built, they believe, at the same time as the, the chapel next door ah. okay. in 1898. Yeah. And I know you wanted a sort of edge of village location, and this is a quiet village but you are next to almost the heart and soul of the village, the chapel. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So every Sunday morning, as you lie in bed, you may hear a little singing <laughs> waking you with, your, with your morning cuppa in the papers. That's every other Sunday. <laughs> oh, Depends okay. what time they start. <laughs> <laughs> but you like the looks of it. The looks, yeah. It's got yeah. a lot of character and it's, yeah. it looks a really good size. Yeah, I like it. Should we get in? Yeah. yeah. Come on. 
This handsome mystery house was built by the local squire originally as a bakehouse. It's constructed from local Titherington quarry stone. The property was never used as a bakehouse and was converted into two cottages, then later into one dwelling. We're entering through a sunroom and starting our tour on the ground floor. The original part of the house is made up of three reception rooms, with a kitchen, shower room and sunroom later additions. We're starting our tour in a large drawing room, which boasts an Indian slate floor. So come through into one of three living spaces in the house. Wow. This is the largest of them. Next door you've got a dining room and then there's a snug at okay. the end as well. Yeah, it's a nice size room. That's a good yeah, size, size room. room. Yeah. I like the slate <laughs> floor. Lovely Rajasthan slate here. And then you can put your Persian rug or something there to give it a bit of colour and change it. So, yeah, good start. It's a yeah, good start. It's a good yeah. start. Now, kitchen diner is always the heart for you of your home. It's the hub of our home. Shall we see what this house has on offer for you? Yeah, let's go. Okay, let's go. Come through into your farmhouse kitchen diner. OK. That's a different layout than I would have anticipated, I have to admit. What were you imagining then? Probably more standard where you've got work surfaces all the way around. It's big enough, isn't it? Yeah. So what I was thinking for you two ah. is you knock through, there's a shower room behind here, ah. and then you've also got that garden room where the main front door comes into. OK, I see. Which was added on in 2000. Knock this whole thing it's through. True. That's just sounding have, yeah. more like what I'd like to see. Yeah. You could certainly open that wall up, have a lot more light come through. Options are there. Should we see more? Yes. Let's head upstairs. I'm glad Tony is thinking through how they can make the layout work for them. Upstairs would give them three bedrooms, all serviced by a characterful family bathroom. They're all good-sized doubles, two with feature fireplaces, one which is in the master. Nice high ceilings as well. It's a good size. Yeah. It's a good size room. You'd have room to put uh, some storage. <laughs> I've uh, got enough wardrobe space here. <laughs> Each no, bedroom, you could enough. put a big couple it's of wardrobes a, in there. A, it's yeah. a good size bedroom. And in this one, you've got a loft hatch above. OK. Now, these walls are thick as. Yeah. OK. But the next middle bedroom also has a loft hatch. OK. And the current owner has thought about going up into the loft yep. and then creating another bedroom space up there. Okay. And we'll head outside and you can also get a, a sense of the outside space that you get with this property. Yep. And then we'll talk price. OK. OK. No worries. Our mystery house may be in the heart of the village, but it has a generous garden that extends to a third of an acre. It's laid to lawn and surrounded by attractive hedges and flower beds. There's also a useful double garage. It looks like it's been well looked after. Nice size garden. Yeah, it's a good amount of space. Well, it's time to talk money. What do you think the mystery house is currently on the market for? Well, I'm going to go in straight in with about 485, £485,000. I think it's a bit less than that. I think it's this property is on the market for £465,000. Mystery property is currently on the market for £525,000. Wow. OK. I can understand that. It is actually a really big house. There's a lot of space here. Why don't you take another look around the mystery house, get a sense of what you do get for your money here, yep. and I'll catch up with you in a moment. OK. okay. Our late 19th century stone mystery house comes in £25,000 below budget and whilst being located in the heart of a charming Cotswold village, it provides generous and adaptable spaces. There's the potential to create a fabulous open plan kitchen diner, plus three reception rooms and a sunroom. As requested, it has three bedrooms and a pretty garden. But this house has got some absolutely great features. You've got beautiful flagstone, you've got lovely tall ceilings, and it's really roomy. The mystery house has a lot of space, has a lot to offer. Hi, good to Hi. see you again. And you? Right, time for a cuppa? Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Let's do that. <laughs> Around a tenth of the Cotswolds countryside is given over to forests and woodland, with ash and beech trees the most prevalent. Western Burt, the National Arboretum near Tetbury, is home to 15,000 tree specimens and includes 2,500 species from across the globe. 
The Arboretum is hosting the Arb Show, which I'm at today. It's the Arboricultural Association's annual trade show, which brings together experts from the tree world and attracts visitors from far afield. Jago Keane is a former chairman of the association. You are the man in the know. What is arboriculture? Have I said it correctly? You've said it perfectly. <laughs> uh, arboriculture is really the science of, of looking after trees where people live, where they play and where they work. It's different to forestry. Forestry is where you would grow trees as a crop, so producing timber or providing spaces, large spaces for recreation. But arboriculture tends to be carried out in our urban areas. And why is that important? It's good for our psychological and physiological well-being. So essentially, we love to have trees around us. And not only that, they're actually cooling our cities, they're providing the air that we breathe, they're just wonderful. This annual event has been running for 19 years and after being located at two previous sites, has moved to the Arboretum. It seems huge, giant machinery everywhere, people climbing gigantic trees. Yeah. And that's the beauty of this industry or this sector is that whatever your interests, whatever your motivations, there's something for you in it. If someone's coming to the show for the first time, yeah. what are the two or three things they must go and see? Well, for a start, they've got to go and see the climbing. You've got to see the physical skills that these people have. You could go and see, for instance, some of the big machines that are here, if you love that sort of thing. Go and talk to the educationalists because it's such a rewarding industry. Go and find out how you can learn about arboriculture. Well, there's obviously a lot of passion to be found in the tree world. And my next stop is with tree surgeon and champion knot tire, Nick Winram. He's running a knot tying competition. So, Nick, tell me why knots at the show here? Uh, they're really important to every aspect of our jobs. They keep us safe in the trees, save our lives. Uh, we use them for rigging branches down and even just tying ladders on the roof to drive down the motorway. So every aspect of our job involves knots. And how did you get involved? I did some training, did an evening course, did my chainsaw licence and got a job with the tree surgery company. And then and I'm now running my own business and I always say I've got the best job in the world. I absolutely love what I do. And it seems to be quite a competitive field when it comes to the knots because at the show today someone will become a, an ARB champion, is that yeah, right? Yeah, we'll have the knot tying champion. We've got five knots that you tie in everyday arboricultural work and we tie them against the clock and whoever's fastest yeah, wins, wins the prize. Current leaderboards? We have got a few leaders at the moment. Is uh, this you? That, that is me. <laughs> we'll probably get the times down to near 20 seconds by the end of the day. So, so this is 30 seconds for five knots? Yes. And can anyone have a go? Absolutely. We had um, a little nine-year-old girl last year. She started off doing a minute 29. Uh, her first attempt, and by the end of the day, she'd got down to 28, 29 seconds. After hearing all about this competitive and important skill, I want to see Nick in action. Nick, are you ready? Yes. Go. I think this is the most complicated one. Seven seconds, eight seconds, done. Get a bit easier as they work their way down. 12 seconds, 13 seconds, Nick. 14, 15, two knots down. Third. Wow, that was fast. I almost didn't even see that one. <gasps> Stop the clock. Wow. 26 seconds. You just smashed the record. Excellent. <laughs> that was impressive. Now, my final visit today is to Simon O'Rourke. He's a chainsaw carver. He turns unwanted wood into a beautiful art form. Simon, it was amazing watching you work, creating this. And you take this all over the world. I do, yeah. I've competed in all sorts of places. Now, watching you work, I have to admit, look dangerous. <laughs> I'm guessing I shouldn't try this at home. I, no, <laughs> is it's, it dangerous? It, it is dangerous. It's like anything. Uh, proper training will uh, set you up to use anything in the correct manner. What is it about working with wood in this way that you enjoy so much? I enjoy the speed and uh, the, I've, uh, I've always been an artist. I was a trained illustrator and then a tree surgeon, which is what brought me into it. And, and I love the texture it leaves as well. It's, it's like a, a tooled markings on the, on the wood, like when you sculpt clay and you get the thumb marks and the finger marks. And is there a best type of wood to use when you're carving in this way? 
the quickest wood to carve are the softwoods. I use a lot of oak. I use uh, some of the softwoods I use, western red cedar or redwood. And does sustainability come into your work in any way? Um, it does. All of my, all of the wood I get is usually from either forestry contractors or tree surgeons. Simon, it's been fantastic seeing you work and experiencing the Arbshire. I can see why it's such a pull. Thank you for your time. Thank you. I've left Tony and Maria having a cuppa and a think about all the properties that we've shown them. I can't wait to find out what their next move is going to be. Hi, lovely to catch up again. Hi. Hi. I can't wait to find out. Do we have a favourite from all the properties we've seen? The favourite for me was the hillside. That house with the lovely views. Yeah. Breathtaking, weren't they, those yeah, views? Yeah, I, I would agree. That's my favourite out of what we've seen. But it wasn't quite quite perfect for you? No, it was actually quite small, the actual cottage for us. Although there was room to extend out into the garden area, but because it was quite a small courtyard, we felt that that would sort of make the garden a little bit too small. And what did you think of the properties that we've shown you? We liked aspects in most of the houses. The bungalow conversion had a great kitchen, that light coming through the ceiling, absolutely wonderful. The one in the hill, well, as you said, it's our favourite. But the views on that property were absolutely amazing. So we almost want to take the views of that property, we want to take the character of that property. I think we'd like to take the kitchen diner of the conversion. Yeah. But obviously you can't do that. And we understand that you compromise of what you're looking for. And each of the properties that we viewed over the last couple of days has given us a lot of information as to what we think would be our ideal property. So where does that leave us now? It leaves us with a good, clear idea of what we actually do want, where we want to be and what we won't accept. Until you actually get here and you look around, there's so many different areas, it's hard to sort of know where you actually want to be. But having been around everywhere, I think we've got a clear idea now what we think we like. Well, we wish you all the best with your property search and please do let us know when you find that dream place. We will, and thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to view a number of properties that we wouldn't have done on our own. It's been a pleasure. Good luck with it all. Thank you. Exploring the Cotswolds really has helped Tony and Maria confirm that this is absolutely the place they want to start the next chapter of their lives. And through the properties we've shown them, they've really crystallised what they want on that must-have list for their new dream home. I'm sure it's out there for them, and I look forward to hearing from them soon that they have found the perfect property. I'll see you next time on Escape to the Country. If you would like to escape to the country in England, Scotland, Northern Ireland or Wales and need our help, you can apply online at bbc.co.uk forward slash be on a show.